All right, everybody, this is where we last left off at the end of part two. If you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. I'll have a link for you guys on the video and somewhere in the description. And alternatively, you could just download the blend file from my Gumroad. I'll have a link for that as well. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of fix the position of my camera and some of the things in the scene because I'm not too happy with it. So first thing I'm going to do is enable my screencast because I always forget. And I'm going to go into my camera settings and change the focal length down to 25 and get rid of my Y shift. So that should be zeroed out. From there, I'm also going to change the aspect ratio of our scene. So I'm going to go 1920 by 1080. So that's just 16 by 9. I'm going to hit R, X to rotate that on the X axis. And I'm going to bring down my particle instancer. I'm just going to hit space to make sure that it's rolling the way I want it to. I'm also just going to decrease the volume of this. Further. I'm going to raise it up a little bit more. A little bit lower. All right. So the positioning I have is that for the camera. If you want to copy exactly what I have, that for the sphere. Uh, this for the particle instancer. And the ground plane is just at the origin of our scene. And let's increase the scale of this to about 1.9. And the way I did that, selecting all three, is I'm just holding shift and I'm kind of scrolling through that. And then once I let go of my left mouse button, it kind of selects all three and I can input a value. All right, cool. So at this point, it might differ for you based on what kind of song you have. So for this, what I essentially want to do is find the moment where the beat hits, and then that's when I want my particles to actually start emitting. So I'm just going to scroll through quickly and figure out what part of my song that happens. So pretty much at 9.30 it starts. So let's go to our emitter here. Uh, frame start is no longer one, it's 9.30. So that was a little late. Let's make it 9.28. And now I have something looking crazy like that, and that is because our end time is a thousand, so it's trying to spew out 60 particles in less than 100 frames, pretty much. So if I were to increase this to, say, 1928, I believe it should be almost the same as it looked before. Pretty much. So now at this point, um, due to not wanting to make the video like two hours i'm essentially going to speed up the process of what i do now and that is to pretty much get my particles to try and hit with every snare hit of the track so that's essentially what you're going to see me trying to do so what i would recommend if you're using your own song is try to find a single instrument that you want the particle to kind of emit with I'm sure there's some formula to figuring that out, but, you know, as an artist that doesn't want to look into that, you, you pretty much just have to tweak some values until you get it right. All right, guys, so I'm going to speed this part up and I'll see you guys soon. guys i am back so essentially what i did is i just played with my start time so i could just iterate a little bit quicker i had my frame start particle for 928 so i just set this to 900 to kind of see the initial start of everything so it doesn't just hit immediately and i just picked 2000 frames for my end time um 
you can do the whole track. You can just do a small clip uh, based on how long you want to render, really. So for me, with this track at 2,000 frames, I had 74 particles starting at 928 and ending right at 2,000. All right. So from here, I'm just going to set this back down to 1. So essentially, I want my sphere then to animate from going from the sky to the ground and be nice and situated by probably at least, let's say, 920. Maybe 900. Yeah, 900 is good. All right, so I'm going to grab the outer glow mesh. Let's maybe put it like... Far up do we want to put this okay, let's go 15 so 15 to 900 all right I'm gonna hit I here to well, I'm hitting you I'm gonna hit I here to, to keyframe that and then I'm going to go to 900 let's go 900 and I want this to be was it at zero not quite at zero. I want it to be at 0. 0.5. Let's make that even 0. 0.5. And I'm going to hit I. So if I go to the start and hit space to play, it should be falling slowly. Cool. So I think the timing is good. So for me, zero, I mean, one, two, nine hundred worked really well. So now let's also make sure that our key here is perfect. So maybe at about 700, I want this to start moving or being affected. So from zero or one, I want this to have a value of zero all the way up to, was it, let's say 700. 700 so from 0 or 1 to 700 I want this to be a 0 and then from 700 to 900 I want this to have a value of 1 so there we can see so let's space again really low frames Get rid of the subsurf on these. Let's do that. So pretty much for performance sake, while I was going through this, I just made sure to get rid of my wireframe uh, modifier on this plane. It was really hurting my performance. So I could still see that the timing is correct. So when I'm actually playing this the way it should look, everything should match up quite nicely. All right, so that's pretty much our main animations taken care of. And then from here, what we can do is let's add an object constraint. Let's do a damped track, and then let's make sure we track our outer glow mesh. And we have something that looks completely incorrect. So let's find the, so negative Z, that seems to work. So if I press play, let's, let's hide that again. I'm just going to restart it. Now we're just watching essentially our camera tracking the ball. Let's see how we've done.
All right. So it works and it doesn't work. So it's doing exactly what I want it to, as in it's tracking, but I don't want it to track that far. And the issue when we have a constraint on it is we can no longer rotate the camera in the axis that we want to. So I'm going to get rid of that damn track. And what we're going to do, we're going to go cursor to selected, and then we're going to bring in a cube. And I'm just going to set the origin of that to this face that is closest to the camera. I'm going to set the cursor there again, and I'm going to go selection to cursor like such. And, and I'm just going to grab this and scale it down. So let's, we have something like this. So now what I can do is let's add the damp track to this and make it track our outer glow mesh on the negative Z. The Y seems to work. And then let's parent, let's make that the parent of our camera. So now if I move this, it should move that. So the same way, if I'm tracking the sphere, the camera should move with it. So let's go back to the beginning and aha, it is. It seems to be working. So what we can do from here is maybe we could also set a, a empty. And I'm going to just rename this uh, tracking empty. And I'm actually going to make the damp track the empty instead of the actual sphere. So I think I'm going to kind of make these move at almost the same rate. So this was moving down to here by 900. Oh my God, 900. Let's split this again. I'm going to make the right side my camera view. And I'm pretty much just going to move my tracker down to the point where I actually want it to be. Which is just right here. So that is 0.89. So let's bring this back up to 15 at 1. So I'm going to insert a keyframe there for our damp tracker. And then what do we have that at 0 0.89? Be at 850. We want this to be 0 0.9. And then insert a keyframe there. And of course, let's make this 90 degrees. Actually, let's center that up at 70. So now let's see what we got going. Okay, since I rotated my camera, now I'm going to actually have to play with the position of where we have this ending. We actually want it to end at, let's say, three. So we want it to be at three. So I'm just going to copy that value three. Go over to, we're at 850. And actually make this a three. And hit I. So now let's check our tracking. And I'm just scrubbing through this pretty fast. It's pretty cool because it looks like the sphere is actually coming closer to us instead of just moving linearly straight up and down. So that's pretty cool. Let me hit play to see what we've got going on. Cool. So that is pretty much the basis of our animation. I still have this off on our display mode, but I could turn that back on. And if you guys were so inclined to, you could of course check this out being rendered in Eevee for yourselves. 
Um, I probably won't do that because I don't want to hurt the performance too much of the video. So now if we take a raw render, I'm just gonna hit F12, that should give us a raw render. We've got something looking like that. I kind of want more reflection here. I'm not getting as much reflection as I thought I would have from our camera, which is interesting, I wonder why. Maybe screen space reflection, refraction. Nope. I wonder if we have to move our camera back a little bit. I feel like maybe that might be the case. So let's grab our cube now and let's just go GY and move that back. Snitch. Negative 10.6. And now let's take a render and let's see what we got going on. So I have a little bit more reflection. So we kind of found our culprit here. Let's move this back to negative 11.2. And now let's render. Nice. So let's say negative 11.5. All right. Uh. Let's go negative 11, negative 12. And now let's go again. All right, that is much, much better compared to the first one. So yeah, if you have uh, something being reflected in Eevee and your render isn't kind of coming through the way you see it in the viewport, chances are your camera might be too close. So just try moving your camera a little bit. It's more so going to be where your camera is based on the scene more so than the values you have over here for Eevee. So just keep that in mind.